Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to go back to the 2012 Champions League final and break down how Chelsea survived Bayern Munich's territorial dominance. When we break down the game, when we do look at the board, we had Chelsea reverting to a 4-2-3-1 due to the absence of Raul Morelis. And we saw Bayern Munich also playing that 4-2-3-1 with the big difference here being that Luis Gustavo was unavailable. So we saw Tony Cruz move into a deeper position with Schweinsteiger and Thomas Muller move in behind Mario Gomez. We also did see Timo Shook move into center back with Boateng and we had Diego Contento move to left back because Alaba couldn't play. As we could see here we do have a makeshift Chelsea side based off the fact that they did miss players due to injury and suspension but the notable inclusion here was that Ryan Bertrand played from the left just ahead of Ashley Cole. That did see Chelsea move to that 4-2-3-1 because in the previous tie against Barcelona they played with three central defensive midfielders and it was Raul Morelis in that center zone with John Obi Mikel and Frank Lampard. But here in that 4 2 3 1, Roberto Di Matteo ensured that they did have enough protection out in those wider areas, given the fact that Bayern Munich have Robin and Ribery cutting in from those wide positions. What you end up seeing from Bayern Munich here is that they have Thomas Muller in that center zone. And the biggest issue here was the fact that Muller often likes to drift into that right channel. So if Muller drifts laterally into that right channel, there is the potential potential that you have that 3v2 and that was the reason why Bertrand's inclusion was helpful. You have Bertrand there just ahead of Cole to offer him protection and what was also key here was the fact that the two central midfielders in Mikel and Lampard had a task of shifting out into those wider zones as well. Lampard would help out Bertrand and Cole and Mikel would shift to the right to help Kalu and Bozingua. That was just in case that they did have the fullbacks pushing forward but in this case we didn't see Contento or Lamb look to be a bit adventurous with their positioning. So you have Muller in that central zone and he can shift to either side of the pitch. And the other key thing here with Muller is that with Lampard sometimes stepping out into the path of Schweinsteiger, Muller was able to receive the ball between the lines freely and that was a big issue for Chelsea. The other threat that Muller does offer is the fact that he could shift out into those wider zones and that gives license for Robben and Ribery to dart at that Chelsea back line. However, when you assess Chelsea's ability to cope with that threat, they did a very good job specifically down that left hand side. Ariane Robin did have more goal attempts than Chelsea throughout that entire game, but for the most part he was often in 1v2 or 1v3 battles and taking shots off balance. The other aspect here was that with Ribery coming down that left hand side, Mikel often did shift over and his threat towards Petr Cech wasn't significant. The key factor here for Chelsea is that they did a very good job of blocking shots and David Luiz and Gary Cahill deserve credit for that given the fact that they were injury doubts ahead of the kickoff. And you can see the significance of Cahill and David Luiz as they blocked nearly half the shot attempts that Bayern Munich did pose on goal. However, one of the keys to Bayern's dominance in this game was the fact that Chelsea never got to grips with their midfield. When you look at Chelsea's midfield, you have Mata playing as that natural number 10. And the reason why they had Mata in that zone was the fact that they could look to break in transition. Bayern looked to push their fullbacks forward. Forward. So the main theme here for Di Matteo was to get Mata to shift out into those wider zones to get the ball away from Contento or Lam and look to play Drogba in against the center backs. Mata's threat didn't really work out in Chelsea's favor based off the fact that Bayern's fullbacks kept deeper positions and they didn't leave gaps in those channels. So with Mata not offering a threat in transition based off the fact that Contento and Lam kept their position to ensure that Mata couldn't play Drogba in against the center backs. Now the big theme here here was whether Mata would have the discipline to stop Bayern's deeper midfielders. But Bayern's deeper midfielders were clever with their movement and what we ended up seeing here is that Mata would step to the deepest midfielder whether it be Cruz or Schweinsteiger but when he stepped to that midfielder they kept their position and Cruz or Schweinsteiger whichever was the free midfielder would look to step forward and look to push into Chelsea's third. That always ensured that Cruz or Schweinsteiger was free and technically that would mean that Mikel would step step into Cruz if he got free and 
and Lampard would step to Schweinsteiger, which we saw more often throughout that game. Nevertheless, with Muller operating in those zones, Lampard and Mikel had to keep their positioning a bit deeper, closer to the back line, and that's why we ended up seeing Schweinsteiger and Cruz being able to dictate the tempo of the game and ensure that Bayern did have the ball in dangerous positions. When we look to Drogba, he was looking to step towards the center backs, but he didn't offer much of a threat there. So although we did see Chelsea closing down those wide areas pretty well, in midfield they struggled to get the grips of it based off the fact that they didn't have another ball winning midfielder in that zone. Chelsea struggled to create chances in that first half. They couldn't get Mata in those spaces to get Drogba involved. The wider players were often too deep to break forward when Mata did get on the ball in those advanced positions. And the fact here was that when they tried to pump balls into Drogba, he was often isolated and outnumbered. When Drogba tried to position himself ahead of Philip Lom because he had that aerial advantage, crosses weren't delivered into his path. And when Drogba tried to win long balls punted towards his zone, Timashuk would shift ahead of him and Boateng would shift behind him as the recovering Bayern defender and that often left Drogba in 1v2 situations. Meanwhile, although Bayern did have a lot of territorial dominance, they did fail to test check as often as they should have. One opportunity did see Robben have to shift to the left channel and Contento pulled the ball back to him where Robben was able to skip past Mikel and Bozingwa as Ribéry was backing into him and Robben broke free into that left half space but before Cahill could come across he poked an effort at check. And the second opportunity did stem from a Bayern break and Muller shifted the ball out to that right channel for Robben to run at Bertrand and Cole. And Robben was able to poke that ball between them before Mikel came across and it fell into the path of Muller at the edge of the box but David Luiz took him out which saw the ball roll to Mario Gomez who let the ball roll across his body to gain a yard on Cahill but he was unable to test check from that zone. But as you can see although Bayern Munich did dominate possession, Chelsea did a very good job of limiting Robben Robben and Ribéry's overall impact from the left and the right and although Chelsea did concede the center of the pitch by having Mata a bit forward, the fact of the matter is, is that they went into halftime nil-nil and going into the second half we're expecting some sort of shift from Di Matteo to help Chelsea fight back. When we look to the second half, we didn't see the game evolve tactically. Yes, we did have Robben and Ribéry break at the Chelsea back line, but in those two incidents within those opening five minutes, David Luiz was able to clear those crosses. But tactically, the game didn't take a shift until we saw Maluda come on for Bertrand. Thomas Muller became the key player in this game, and he often shifted into the right channel zone or onto Ashley Cole where he could look to isolate him at that back post. We saw Mikel receive a book for taking out Thomas Muller in that right channel and as Bayern Munich searched for a winner Thomas Muller was more involved. Initially we did see Ribéry taking on Bozingua and as Kalou was tracking back the ball deflected across the box into the path of Muller ahead of Cole but Muller dragged his shot wide of the net. Shortly after that we had Contento ahead of Bozingua and he ended up pulling the ball back into the path of Robben who shifted out to the left hand side and he was ahead of Mata and he delivered across to that back post and we ended up seeing Muller tower over Ashley Cole to nod an effort at Petr Cech and that's when we began to see that movement. We had Muller peeling to the back post ahead of Ashley Cole and we saw Mario Gomez looking to try and isolate David Luiz to ensure that he couldn't get on the ball. And shortly after that Bayern Munich were able to take the lead and once again we did see Robben and Ribéry down that left hand side. Robben ahead of Kalu and he poked the ball into the path of Ribéry running at Bozingua and with Ribéry looking to cut onto his right foot along with Mikel and Kalu shifting over. He pulled the ball back into the path of Cruz who wasn't marked and Cruz delivered across to that back post that saw Muller not a free header on goal past Petr Cech based off the fact that Cole did gamble and he shifted into the path of Gomez who peeled off David Luiz. But as you can see what ended up happening was the fact that Muller was looking to isolate Ashley Cole but we had Robben and Ribéry once again shifting onto the same side for an overload and what what also should be noted here was that the Bayern fullbacks were pushing forward to peg back Chelsea in that moment. 
Bayern also had a chance to kill off the game from a Neuer punt. It saw Muller win an aerial duel over Cole and Maluda into the path of Robben, and that's where we see both players swap positions. But when Robben looked to gain a yard on Cahill, he fired his shot wide of the net. Muller's opening goal did force Di Matteo to turn to his bench. He brought on Fernando Torres for Kalou to offer another striking presence up front, with Torres shifting out to the right. And Heinkes looked to counter that by bringing on Van Boyten for Thomas Muller that saw Van Boyten play at center back because he does have an aerial presence and that saw Timashuk move into midfield with Cruz playing just in behind Gomez. And just like that, Chelsea were back in the game despite winning their first corner kick where we saw Didier Drogba use his aerial threat to Chelsea's advantage. However, heading into extra time, Di Matteo did have a tactical issue to address. He had Torres in an advanced right position, but his overall approach here was to ensure that Robben and Ribéry couldn't threaten Chelsea's backline from those wider areas. The obvious decision would be to bring on Oriel Romeo or Michael Essien to offer cover for Bozingua. However, Di Matteo's gamble did backfire because we did see Drogba conceding a penalty as he tracked back and fouled Ribéry. Luckily for Chelsea, what ended up happening here was that Petr Cech did deny Robben from the spot. And the only other factor here was that Bayern Munich lost their key player in Thomas Muller. And although Tony Cruz did do a good job in that number 10 role as Bayern got to the final. The fact here was that without Muller's clever movement, Chelsea were able to stifle Bayern Munich from attacking through those zones. But when you break down that game as a whole, Heinke has won the tactical battle here. Schweinsteiger and Cruz were able to dominate the game from deeper positions and Chelsea didn't have a legitimate route to goal. Mata was unable to find space in those channels based off the fact that the fullbacks didn't push forward. Drogba was isolated and they couldn't get any cross to him from set pieces or open play and when you do really assess it Thomas Muller was the key player here varying his positioning and finding a legitimate weakness in that Chelsea backline by getting in behind Ashley Cole at the back post however Chelsea did have a few individual displays that did get them over the line one being the center backs who constantly blocked shots when Bayern Munich got into key positions John Obi Mikel did have a good game protecting the back four despite the fact that Thomas Muller did get into good positions on the rare occasion. And when we look at the wider areas, what we end up seeing here was that they were able to neutralize Robben and Ribéry as a whole. And that was one of the reasons why Chelsea were able to win here. And that was the key throughout this tournament. We also have to give Peter Cech credit because he did make key penalty saves against Bayern Munich in the penalty shootout and against Ariane Robben. And when you assess it, yes, Bayern Munich were the better team, but Chelsea were able to get over the hump based off the fact they held on, rolled their luck and had a few key individual performances here that made the difference. Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.